Hi, this is Rachel, and today we're going to talk about topic 32 of our supervision curriculum, and this one is on feedback. So when we talk about feedback, it's one of those things where we give a lot of feedback to our trainees, but we also want to teach our trainees how to give feedback in an appropriate and efficient manner. So we use feedback in order to help an individual change their behavior, but the way that we deliver that feedback can definitely affect how the individual is going to use that feedback. If feedback is delivered in a way that is aversive to the individual receiving the feedback, they are less likely to follow that feedback to make changes um, and may engage in uh, other side effect behavior, uh, counter uh, behavior to that feedback. Um, however, if feedback is given in a way uh, that works well for the person receiving that feedback, they are more likely to try to implement those behavior changes. And you can recognize this when you um, reflect back on maybe supervisors or individuals who have given you feedback before. In some cases, you walked away thinking, yes, I, I really do want to try and change that. That's great. I loved that information. Um, versus uh, in other cases, you may have felt like, well, that person doesn't know what they're talking about. I'm not going to do that. There's no way. Nah, -uh. right. So we want to try to deliver our feedback in a way where we can help the individual to change their behavior. And we want to teach our trainees how to deliver that feedback as well. Throughout this time, they have probably been the recipient of a lot of feedback, but now we want them to learn to deliver feedback as well. So um, there's an evidence-based protocol for providing feedback to staff. And this comes from the uh, Reed Parsons and Green Supervisors Guidebook. And in this protocol, we're going to begin the feedback with a positive or empathetic statement. So, hey, you, it looked really good out there. Or, wow, it looked like the learner was having lots of fun. Or even, you know, maybe it's a statement around, wow, I know some days can just be really tough. I get it. I understand. Right. Step two, specify what the staff performed correctly. Um, and we want to make sure that we are highlighting what our individuals are doing that we like to see. Just like with our learners, that descriptive praise is going to help increase the likelihood of those behaviors occurring in the future. We want to do the same with our trainees. We want our trainees to do the same with anyone that they are training. Step three would be specify what they performed incorrectly if applicable. So one mistake that is sometimes made when talking about feedback is that people might only give feedback when they want to change something, when they've identified maybe an error or something they want the person to do differently. However, feedback can be completely just positive and we should be giving feedback that is just about what they're doing right without any correction in there as well. If we only present feedback with, you did this right, but you did all this other stuff, not the way I want to see it, then our trainees are only going to be waiting for us to say, but here's all you did wrong. They're not even going to listen to what we say that they're doing right, because we always are pairing that with what they're doing wrong. So it just becomes a signal for here's what you're doing wrong. So instead, we also need to just provide positive feedback. Um, for some individuals, it might be most important to actually separate those two pieces out where you only do the um, uh, positive feedback about what they did correct under one circumstance and then um, you know, maybe out on the floor, 
Uh, if you're in a clinic where there are other people, you only provide the positive statements there in public with everybody else. And then in private, you meet with them and you work on the other pieces that you want to fix. Um, step four, specify the actions. If there was something that was performed incorrectly, specify specifically, specifically, wow, <laughs> specify what the person needs to do in order to correct the behavior that you identified in step three. So don't just tell somebody that's not it. You're doing it wrong. Don't do it like that. Teach them how to do it correctly. This is where you might fall back on your behavioral skills training, where you explain why it needs to be done differently and you give them written and uh, spoken instruction and you model it and you let them practice and you do that piece. That's sort of like set in there with that step four. That might be where you do additional training. Step five, ask for questions, solicit questions from the individual about the information that you provided. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions for me? Do you understand what I'm explaining? Um, is there anything that doesn't make sense? It's really important to solicit those questions, to ask for that feedback there, because you can help clarify maybe any points that aren't uh, clear to the individual. For example, maybe they want to clarify why it's this way with this learner, but it's not with another learner, or whether or not you want them to do it this other way um, all the time or just under circum certain circumstances. So you open yourself up for those questions and then you answer those questions and you don't get upset and you don't get defensive that someone's asking questions because they're just trying to understand how to do it better. Step six, you're going to inform the person about your follow-up, right? Um, okay, I will come and watch you tomorrow or next week when I come and watch you again. I'd love to see that. Or I'm going to check in with so-and-so or we'll look at the data and blah, blah, blah. Like, what are you going to do to follow up, right? You shouldn't just say, don't do that, do this other thing, but then never follow up to see if they've made that change. When you follow up, you should specifically looking be looking for that change and you should praise them for making that change based upon your feedback. And then step seven, end the feedback with another positive or empathetic statement. So thank you so much for um, you know all your work that you're doing here. It looks like the kid is having fun or I can see you're working hard. I know you're trying your best. I really appreciate that. So this is a task analysis for providing feedback. And for the assignment, what I have trainees do is to make a video of them using that protocol to provide feedback to someone. I have had individuals use other members of their family where they just coach them on how to do something. I've also had um, individuals use like props where they're just giving feedback to a stuffed animal to practice the giving feedback portion. Um, the idea is that they are practicing the protocol, they're going through the steps, they're pausing at all the right points, and then they share that video back with us. And then in the group, we practice giving feedback to them on their delivery of feedback. Um, also, we ask that they make a list of three examples of ways to rephrase corrective feedback so that it is likely to be received better. Um, for example, instead of saying, don't do it like that, say something like, try it like this. So those are the assignments. If you have any questions or comments or feedback for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Thanks.